Hello, property nomads. Hope you're well. We need to talk about China's economic problems and what that means for the rest of the world. China is having a lot of issues at the moment, both internally and externally. And as is always challenging with China, it can be quite difficult to either rely on the data, trust the data, or to really get an idea of what on earth is going on that side of the world. And I've got a friend that lives over in China, uh, near the border with Hong Kong. And he basically said it's business as usual at the moment. That's on the face of everything he's seeing, that it's business as usual. He's saying construction in his particular area is relatively consistent. Bear in mind, I believe he lives in a relatively small city by China standards. He is not reporting any issues as far as he is concerned. But that doesn't mean that China isn't having problems. So we've got an article here from um, Nick Marsh at the BBC. Uh, Nick is the Asia business correspondent. And uh, the, the opening line is a line that is quite interesting. It says, there is a saying that when the United States sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. But what happens when China is unwell? Now, that's very, very good because China, for want of a better way of putting it, is quite ill at the moment. It's the world's second largest economy. It's home to 1.4 billion plus people. It's facing issues such as slow growth, high youth unemployment, and a property market that's in complete disarray. We're going to touch on Evergrande uh, again in a separate video, so watch out for the YouTube channel for that. All of this is leading up to be a massive headache, not just for Beijing, but for, for, for the rest of us. Well, why is that? Well, it's because we've got to look at if purchasing power in China, for example, goes down, people aren't, you know, if people aren't spending as much on goods and services, what happens when households spend less? You know, you and I are having similar challenges in the UK. When cash starts to get tight, what, what might we do? We might start to go out to restaurants less. We might start to uh, do less, less drinking or, or less consumerism in general. Well, then what happens if that happens? Then your demand for goods, products and services are going to go down. And this is one of the key things that people are concerned about China with. So, yes, you've got companies like Apple. You've got uh, the article says here, Volkswagen, Burberry. They'll get a lot of their revenue from China's consumer market. Fair enough. Fair play. But if those people start spending less, then those companies' revenues might take a massive hit. And if those companies' revenues take a massive hit, what do they look to do? Because if their profitability is down considerably, they're going to have to look at ways to become more cost efficient. And normally, cost efficiency will involve eliminating some overheads. Now that those overheads could be staff, they could be mainly staff, to be honest. It could be offices as well, which again affects the property side of things. But let's just say they get rid of staff. Well, that means more unemployment. And then you can start to see now that vicious cycle starts to play in. Also, China is responsible for more than a third of the growth in the world. It's been on the roll for the last 30, 35 years, give or take. And as with any bubble, as with most things, most things that go up have got to go back down. Bubbles have got to burst at some point. It's just the nature of the beast. This is what's happening to China. They are starting to slow down. Now, there's nothing wrong with a slowdown. Absolutely nothing wrong with a slowdown at all. It's, it is what it is. But when you're responsible for that much growth in the world, 
then you have this reliance on you. It's almost like the world has created a single point in, uh, a single point of failure by saying to China, you do what you need to do, have as much growth as you want. Or by the way, if it does go wrong, the rest of us are screwed, but uh, we will worry about that further on down the line. Now we are at further on down the line and it's uh, not quite good at the moment. China has a huge trade surplus. Um, it exports so much more than it imports. So that's the one thing that can possibly save China at the moment. But the issue with that is if everyone else around the world is spending less and consuming less, then that trade surplus is going to diminish, I would say relatively quickly, but that's not going to be quite the case given how big this surplus is probably going to be, but that trade surplus will certainly um, go down in value. China is spending less on goods and services, as we've discussed, house building, uh, which we will discuss in a separate video as well. One good benefit of China being not economically weak, but having challenges at the moment, is that weak demand in China, so China's consumers consuming less, that will mean that maybe from your point of view, maybe from my point of view, the prices should stay low. That means export prices should remain relatively low. That's beneficial to you and I. It means if we're buying stuff in China, we can still pick things up relatively inexpensively. So that is definitely a good thing. In a nutshell, and the article goes on and on and on, it, we're on a knife edge. China's economic issues are going to either not be too problematic for the world, or there's going to be some absolutely huge consequences down the line. We have to remember that China is a is a global power, and it has its own global ambitions, and that you know they're, they're in bed quite a bit with Russia and other BRICS countries, and also not at war with the United States, but you never know what's going to happen moving on down the line, it's very difficult to judge. So China's economic issues might create opportunities, definitely for consumers outside of China in terms of competitive pricing or continually competitive pricing. And what is happening within China, uh, I'm sure the government in their infinite wisdom will try to curb and control where necessary in order to stop loads of bad news from leaving the country. But at the same time, uh, if something is going to blow up, then it's going to blow up. So if there is an economic collapse, for example, you're going to know about it, I think, sooner rather than later, because news does travel fast. China is also always going to be a, a key trade partner just because of its people power and the amount of goods and services it produces. Critically as well, moving forwards, uh, China does have quite a lot of the useful materials that the world needs as well. So we're talking about uh, mining, we're talking about like batteries or the components that are needed to make batteries, etc., etc. So it's not like China's going to go away anytime soon. That's never going to be the case. But we do have to look at what is going on in China and to understand that if it can happen there, it can certainly happen where we live as well. So let's see what happens. Uh, China's economic problems are certainly worth keeping an eye on. It's on the knife edge. Uh, it's going to go one of two ways. Uh, we will find out what happens moving forwards.
as usual thank you for supporting the show uh, if you are on youtube please make sure you subscribe to the channel and use that bell notification thing to get new video updates straight to your devices and please do go ahead over to itunes uh spotify other po other podcast platforms i should say in order to uh, subscribe and leave us a review as well because that really helps us push the property nomads name out there look forward to seeing you in the next video